Hi, this is Friedrich. In this video, I'm going to present my ICMS paper titled Fungrim, a symbolic library for special functions. So Fungrim is a website I've been developing for about a year now. Uh, you can find it at fungrim.org. So Fungrim is um, short for the mathematical functions Grimoire. And Grimoire means uh, a book of magic formulas. And the magic formulas in this case are special function identities and uh, theorems for mathematical functions. Uh, so it's essentially an online reference work for mathematical functions. And it has right now around 3000 entries. Um, just one example is this entry for the functional equation of the Riemann zeta function. So this is just uh, a screenshot of the website. Uh, if you scroll down on the entry page, you will get a list of uh, mathematical functions. This is the beginning of the list. Um, and you can click on some uh, link to get a topic for a function like the Riemann zeta function. This is the topic page for the Riemann zeta function. Um, so there are lots of entries in different sections. First you get a definition. Um, and there is also an illustration of the Riemann zeta function in the complex plane. Um, then further down on the page, you get lots of different entries. Um, for example, the functional equation, um, some inequalities, uh, the Euler-Maclaurin formula, um, and many others that are not shown here. Um, and if you click on the details for an entry, you will get some more information. Like for this inequality, um, here you can see the expanded view after clicking on details. So you see the formula itself. Uh, and then you see the assumptions. So in this case, it's a formula involving a one free variable s, and s is a complex number, and there is a condition for the formula to be valid. Uh, in this case, s has to have a real part greater than one. Uh, then below you get a text source code that you can copy and paste into your own papers. Uh, there is a table of uh, definitions for the symbols that appear in the formula. Um, and there are also links that you can click on to get more information about each symbol. Uh, at the bottom you see the source code. Um, so this is what is actually in the database. It's a um, symbolic expression uh, describing um, the formula and metadata. Uh, so the database itself is just um, a list of symbolic expressions like this and the website is generated automatically. Um, from this source code, including uh, the tech code, which is uh, generated automatically. Um, just another example of an entry. This is uh, the modular transformation for uh, Eisenstein series. So in this case, there are uh, several parameters appearing in the formula, and there are some uh, more complex constraints. Uh, tau has to be a complex number in the upper half plane, A, B, and C, D, have to be integers such that uh, this matrix belongs to SL2 set. Um, another example, uh, this uh, nice inequality for that gives um, the error bound for approximating the prime counting function by uh, uh, log integral, uh, assuming the Riemann hypothesis. So in this case, it's a result that depends on the Riemann hypothesis and it's uh, explicit uh, in the entry. Uh, so for this entry, there is also some um, um, a reference uh, to the literature where you can find a proof for this formula. Um, so most of the entries in Fungrim right now don't have references, uh, but a few of them uh, do. And this is uh, obviously something that can be improved. So an important question you might ask about Fungrim is... Um, why create yet another reference work on special functions? Uh, there are many to choose from already, uh, more or less specialized. Uh, of course, there's the DLMF, the Digital Library of Mathematical Functions, um, the Wolfram Mathematical Functions site, um, and many others. Um, these two, the DLMF and the Wolfram function site, are the ones that I have used the most, I would say. Um, and they are quite different. Um, the DLMF is more in the tradition of a book like Abramowitz and Stegan. Um, so it's, um, it's very condensed. Um, 
and well edited, um, but it's also missing some information, uh, in my opinion. Uh, the Wolfram Mathematical Function site is um, partially automatically generated um, using Mathematica, so it has hundreds of thousands of entries, um, which has pros and cons. It means it has a lot of content, um, but it can sometimes be difficult to find what you're looking for. Um, and it's also tied to uh, the Wolfram um, language system, which is not open source. Um, so there were actually several reasons uh, why I wanted to create this uh, project. Um, mostly because I simply wanted to do something that was useful for me. Uh, but I also wanted to make something that was fully open source. So both the DLMF and the Wolfram function site are not open source. Um, I wanted all the content to be uh, fully computer readable um, using symbolic expressions and not just LaTeX so that you could use it for computations um, or doing different um, processing of the database itself. Uh, I wanted to deal with complex variables um, and arbitrary mathematical functions, um, so not have any restrictions for the content. Um, and I wanted to deal well with complex variables, which means um, treating things like branch cuts uh, very rigorously. Um, there are no um, size restrictions. Um, in principle, the database could grow to uh, accommodate any formula that uh, people find useful. It's just a matter of uh, finding the time to add that. Um, and I wanted to have rigorous semantics, so I really know what uh, the formulas means. Formula mean, formulas mean, um, and this means um, this is why I include um, explicit assumptions for every entry in the database. Um, so the backend for uh, the library for the database is a, a Python library called Pygrim, um, and you can find it on GitHub, um, and it's basically used to generate the website. So I take the symbolic expressions, um, I convert that to tech, and then I use katech to generate HTML. Uh, and it also generates uh, cross-references and the topic pages and everything else needed for the website. Um, and the other thing that this library does is um, some symbolic computation. Um, so you can use this for actually testing um, functions uh, testing functions and formulas in the database. Um, so this is um, a bit of symbolic code written in Python that is wrapping uh, Flint and ARB mainly to do the difficult uh, calculations. Um, so for the database, I decided to um, develop um, a simple symbolic expression language uh, from scratch. Um, and this shows that you can use it in uh, Jupyter. So this is just importing the uh, Pygrim Python library. And what you see here is on the right hand side is an example of uh, a symbolic expression in what I've named the Grim uh, formula language. Um, so in this case, it's this source code and it produces this formula rendered uh, to LaTeX. Um, and you can do some manipulations with Pygrim in this case, for example, you could replace capital N with a concrete value. And then you can call the eval method um, on this formula, which evaluates this um, to its concrete value. Um, so I'm using a very simple syntax here. It's really just um, the composition of function calls. And then you have arithmetic overloading through Python. Um, uh, and the default is that formulas don't evaluate. Um, if you enter a formula like this, you get it unevaluated and you have to do eval explicitly to get any form of simplification or evaluation. Um, so you can write simple mathematical formulas and simple functional programs involving mathematical objects, but uh, this is not intended to be um, a general purpose programming language like uh, most computer algebra systems use. Um, you're supposed to embed it in something like Python uh, and then use Grimm expressions um, just for describing mathematical formulas. And then you can use something like Python for actually manipulating the formulas. Uh, here's another example um, of some formulas. It's a 
formula of the Dedekind eta function. You can evaluate it symbolically. You can call the n method um, to get a numerical enclosure computed using ARB. Um, and this is for the evaluated version. And you can see that these enclosures agree. So it's a check that uh, this formula is valid. Um, so the symbolic engine in Pygrim, it does some simple evaluation, um, some inferences. It can do um, calculations with algebraic numbers. Uh, and I'm actually starting to work on a, recently started working on a new C library as a spin-off of this, um, where I'm trying to implement um, exact real and complex arithmetic uh, a bit more efficiently um, and comprehensively. So my plan is to use that for uh, the complex calculations in Pygrim. Uh, things that don't work yet are um, calculus op operators like computing limits um, and more advanced inferences. Um, but it turns out that um, just the simple um, symbolic manipulations I've implemented so far actually work quite well for uh, developing and testing the database. Um, now, one of the main reasons why I did something uh, from scratch instead of using an existing computer algebra system is that um, I think it's a big problem both in many of the existing reference works and computer algebra systems that uh, formulas are only really correct modulo special cases, which means that um, a formula might not be valid for some exceptional set of points and on branch cuts or for infinities and this is often not explicitly documented. Um, if you go to the Wolfram Mathematica documentation, um, you can find actually warnings like this, that the answer might not be valid for certain exceptional values of the parameters. Uh, in this case, I think it's from the documentation for the ODE solving that you can get uh, solutions of ODEs um, that might not be valid at some exceptional points. Um, so in general, the user has to um, check the details, check the special cases, and maybe fill in the gaps. Um, and this means you cannot use a um, computer algebra system um, or the formulas you find in the literature directly for uh, theorem proving. You have to do some work to check that they are correct. Uh, and it's really difficult to test a system like this automatically uh, because you don't really know if you if you get an inconsistency, if it's a problem with the test code or a problem with the implementation or a bug in the uh, formula. So this is something I want to avoid by having a really mathematically consistent semantics for um, the Grimm formulas. Um, as an example, um, in Mathematica, if you evaluate the 1f1 function in two different ways, you could get the value 2 or e for this expression. If you do it in Pygrim, um, you get the same result both ways. So it's meant to be consistent. And if you look in the Fungrim database um, for the entries uh, describing the 1f1 function, uh, you will find that the assumptions actually um, rule out uh, a contradiction. So in this case, this entry is applicable, uh, but the one at the bottom, which give, would give you e instead of 2, uh, is not applicable. So there is no contradiction because of the explicit assumptions. Uh, so working with um, Pygrim, um, if you simplify formulas or evaluate formulas, um, typically nothing will happen um, unless you specify assumptions for the variables. So if you take, for example, x divided by x and evaluate this, you will get the same expression back um, unevaluated. If you specify that x should be a complex number, then you still get uh, x divided by x unsimplified. Um, but if you explicitly specify that x is not equal to 0, uh, then it simplifies to 1, because that then we have ruled out the division by 0. Um, and at the bottom, you see an example with the constraint for the sine function, where it evaluates to 0, where um, the variable n is an integer. Um, so this is used for testing formulas. Um, let's say you want to test the formula square root of x squared equals x with the assumption that x is a real number. Um, you can enter this formula in Python and 
use the test method, you write formula.test, and you specify the variables and you give the assumptions. Uh, and then the code will plug in random values um, and check if the formula is valid. So it's valid for the first few values, but it's not valid for uh, minus one half. Um, in fact, it's not valid for any negative numbers. Um, so we find that uh, the formula is not correct with these assumptions. Uh, if we add correct assumptions, uh, we could, for example, specify these assumptions, um, then uh, the test code passes. Um, here's a more complex example from the database. It's a, a formula giving error bounds for a, um, an approximation of an elliptic integral. So you have uh, three parameters and a bit more complex calculations, and there are some <clears throat> more complex assumptions uh, for the variables. So we can test this um, and it passes nicely. Um, <clears throat> so I've been able to test the whole uh, database and it takes a few hours. Um, I would say about 75% of the entries can really be tested. Uh, for some of them, uh, they involve assumptions or limit operators, derivatives, integrals, and things like that, that the, the Symbolics backend is not really able to handle right now. Uh, but for most of the entries, um, the testing uh, really works. And I know that it works because the first time I ran it, it did find errors in some of the entries. Um, so the first time it found errors in 24 entries, and after that I improved um, the test code and was able to find some more errors. Um, so probably there are um, some errors left um, that have not yet been found this way, but I think it's a quite good strategy uh, for, fixing, for detecting and fixing errors. Um, so what are my plans for the future developments? Um, Right now, the database itself just consists of Python code. It's actually part of Pygrim. Um, and it doesn't really need to be anything else for a small database, let's say up to 10,000 entries. Uh, but for a bigger database, um, um, you will probably need to do something more clever for a searching and um, fast access. Um, it would be interesting to try to automatically generate some more content instead of entering everything by hand. Uh, there's a lot of things you could do for the interface on the website um, and for the backend code. I would like to have implementations not just in Python, but also, for example, in Julia. Um, and I would like to make it easy for other people to contribute, for example, by having an easy way to uh, test formulas um, so users can um, easily check that uh, the formula matches the intended um, semantics of uh, the backend engine. Uh, finally, an application I was want to mention is uh, using formulas in the database as rewrite rules. Um, an example would be something like this. You could uh, look up a formula that gives a trigonometric identity like this, rewriting a product of sines as a difference of cosines. So you can actually do this right now. You can type in a formula in Pygrim and you can use the rewrite fungrim method to apply this specific uh, formula as a rewrite rule. Uh, and it does some pattern matching and it also checks that uh, the assumptions hold for the uh, matched parameters. Uh, it's not very useful right now because uh, the pattern matching really needs to be improved and it would be more useful with uh, some search tools. Um, and I think even more interesting would be to try to automatically simplify formulas um, using this kind of strategy by automatically finding um, rewrite rules that lead to simplifications. But uh, this is obviously a, a much more difficult uh, problem uh, to do very well. Um, that's really everything um, I wanted to say. So thank you for listening and I'll be happy for any feedback.